story and every bottle. Ken, this is a great beer. Have you had this one? I have. This is I like that. This is jacked up by, yeah, uh, by, by, Hobbs. by Hobbs. What I particularly like is they have a VW I know. And on it. I know. But what's funny is they have the front <laughs> side jacked up with the motor. Yeah. And yeah. a VW has a motor in the back of the vehicle. I, I know. Well, so, no, but it doesn't have any tires on it. They're going to put hops on there instead. Is that what it is? Because yeah, it's, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh they have guys, 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 guys. Oh, we're, we're live? live? We're no, live. no, we're not really live, are we? Oh, hi. Hey, everybody. We're, we're not we're drinking beer. Drinking no, beer. no, Ken, we wouldn't do that. Ken, you're talking to the wrong camera. See, see I'm talking to the wrong camera. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. See what happens? Oh, we're over there. See what I'm the one drinking the double, <laughs> and you're the one that's looking at the wrong camera. What's going on? Yeah. You're, you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving. <laughs> Good afternoon, Hi, everybody. Folks. It's another Monday with the Hermits. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we, we have so much fun, don't we? Cheers, gentlemen. You know the best part another about this, this particular Monday? We don't have to wait to have a drink. No. Uh, lots of times, you know, there's well, like some preamble right and you tell people this or that and all this stuff. And Chuck yeah. and I are like, come on, we need a drink. You know, this is, this is, this is a good thirsty. way to start. Yeah. So, yeah. so actually that is true. And, and, and we are talking about some great beers that we do carry here in the deli. So if you come into Hermit Woods, uh, all we carry is local New Hampshire craft beverages. This is jacked up by, uh, by Hobbs. It's a really great double IPA. And uh, Ken's drinking uh, Henniker's a, a favorite. Henniker's. Porter? Working Man's Porter. Working Man's Porter. Yes. One of my favorite beers is, is a Porter. And uh, Chuck joined with the Jacked Up. So lots, yeah. lots of great breweries in New Hampshire, and we like to support all of them. So thank you all for out there out there uh, brewing, brewing such great All right, we're beer. done with beer. We're going to wine so now? We're not yet. Oh, not no, yet? No. Now so we got to. I got to tell the audience what okay. we're doing. So most of them already know, right? They, these are all our friends. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Mm -hmm. Let's see who's on. Hi, everyone. We've got a few people on already. Matt's here. Great, great to see you, Matt. Janice, Gary, all Excellent. our all our regulars. Thank you, guys. It's so great right. to see you every Monday. Um, I'm glad you can can show up for the show. Um, for those of you who might be new to the show, uh, please subscribe to our Facebook channel and or our YouTube channel so that when we go live, you'll learn about it and uh, and be able to join us every Monday. 5.30 every Monday, we're going to be here one way or another. Well, here or well, maybe we'll be on a sailboat or something. On a bicycle. And, on a bicycle. We might be on a bicycle. You never know. Oh, so, yeah, we will. But we'll wherever we are on a Monday at 5.30, we'll be here with you. And if you join us, you'll, you'll get to, to And we might be fun. drinking. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost a, a, a guarantee. So uh, today, we're going to do some fun stuff. Uh, oh, another thing. I know I say this every week, but for those of you who are new, um, we really love it if you'd let yourself be known. Oh, I hear that the, the refrigeration. Chuck, could you turn off number fifteen on the on the board there? Thank you. Oh, good. We got some background. Yeah, we got background noise. We're gonna get. No, we're sitting at the here. bar in the loft. It's a nice spot, and um, yes. But when that fridge goes on, it's a little noisy. It's really noisy. So uh, anyway, so we're uh, a couple things. If you if you are here with us, please let yourself be known. The best way is to actually just say hello in the comment section. And if you uh, if you like our page or like the broadcast, share it. If you think you have friends who would enjoy participating in this in this Monday afternoon fun. And uh, you know, I met another couple this weekend in the tasting room. We were talking about this and that, and. He said, you know, we, we, we love the, your Monday broadcast, all this stuff, but th they've never seen them on no, I, listening and asking questions. There are a lot of people that show up, which is fine. No, it's They, they just want to watch it. It's like, great. Like, I hope like you're there TV, now. Which is great. Yeah. Absolutely. There's, there was a couple that came up to me in the, in the yeah. garden today, and they said, uh, or love the, the other day, and they or... said, love the show. We, 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 we watch every Monday. And I, and I didn't, didn't know, know them. And see, right. Well, I knew who they were, but I didn't know that they were watching our show. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, let us know. Ask questions if you want. We'll answer your questions if we can live, and we'll uh, we'll answer them after the show is over if we can't get to them live. So, so we should we should get started because uh, you we know, have a lot to talk about today. So, what know, are we talking about, Ken? Tell us. We've got some wine going on here. We we, uh, we dug deep. You know, there was a. Um, I diverged right at the beginning. I didn't even finish yeah, my sentence. No, so there, 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 there was a there was a place well, I caught we'll myself. No, no. You ever you ever listen to a, a you ever listen to a radio station where they do uh, deep tracks and they go back in the archives? So yeah, there was yeah, a place yeah. KROQ or something in LA yeah, yeah. that I used to listen to, and they would do this deep tracks, you know, on Friday afternoon or something like that, and they would go back and play an early Led Zeppelin song yeah. or whatever it was. So today we're doing deep tracks. We 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 digging in. You know, I love the older. analogies we keep coming up with. Music. It's to music. all about music. Music, and that's yes. what you know. That's why we built this room, is for music. That is yeah. the whole reason Absolutely. we spent all that energy and effort building this room is for music. Yes. Right. Yes. I can't wait. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, one of the most enjoyable music experiences I've ever had was just the other night here with you and John Lorenz yeah. and his gang Practicing. rehearsing. Yeah. Right. Because usually when you go to a performance, you go and you hear a performance. And it, and it could be a live jazz improv thing, but it's still someone who's performing for an audience. There's a purpose. There's, a, there's an understated format that's involved. That wasn't what was taking place here. There was people who like to play music together and play professionally together, but they were just here to, to work on music, work on, on sequences and ideas. And we got to partake in that. You, so, you listen to the music and then you hear them discuss it in a completely different language. So, <laughs> so to get everybody up to speed, what Ken is talking about, John Lorenz is our collaborator I'm on the open music. Wine while you're talking. Yeah, you should do that. Okay. So John is collaborating with us on the music side of this event, which is, as we said, the most important side of this new space. And uh, he's he's finding artists to play our piano, and he's helping us fill the fill the gaps in the in the uh, garden for artists on Sunday night. We have a, a live uh, singer songwriter thing going on in our in our garden every Sunday from six to three. Well, John has a band, a jazz band that he's been playing with for years, and he asked me early on when we got this place open if he could use the the loft when we're not using it as a place to practice. And I said, well, the only caveat is, if you practice here, you have to allow me to sit in the back of the room and watch. And uh, I tell you, I have, like Ken just described, for the last three practice sessions, have had one of the yeah, most you've been phenomenal. Every, every, every one of them. Absolutely, I won't miss them. They're, they're, it's absolutely amazing. It's like learning a new language. I get, to, I get to hear from the musicians and learn about what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then they go on to play these amazing tracks of songs or, or, or uh, uh, amazing music that they're putting together, much of which John Lorenz actually wrote, some of which are yeah. jazz standards. And uh, it's just, it's a, it's a profound experience. And I don't know, we, we broached the subject, and I don't know if John and his, his band members are going to be, be up for it, but we broached the subject and we'll see if we can get it to happen. But we talked about this idea of Monday night uh, practice sessions. And they'd be an opportunity for others, not just us, to come in and enjoy this really unique experience. I don't know if we're going to be able to make that happen, but we're going to try and there see needs if it, to be it makes sense. there needs to be the respect for what they want to do. Absolutely, they, they, no, they the need only to way practice, and people need a... we need to keep it, you know, under John's guidance. Absolutely, what, what works that's for the only him. way it will and, happen. I mean, you and I were sitting, you know, this far apart, and we were texting, texting. to each other, so, so we, we wouldn't, wouldn't make disturb any sound. them. <laughs> exactly. No, no, you guys are you're so good. I don't think the most of the population has the discipline that you guys do. Well, then, they, then they're then they not going to be invited. I'm going to take yeah. your wine away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was complimenting you. That oh, was a nice thing. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was I thought it was enough to say that it means that these guys, this group, is it seven on seven? No, no. Uh, no, it wasn't actually. It's, it's a different band. It's a different band. It's John's. It used to be a trio. Now it's you know, it's a five piece band. Uh, okay. Well, they're but two of the people something. were in seven on seven. Well, they're practicing for something. Maybe yeah, they no, could have a performance here. No, they're they're performing. They're live. They're out in the world playing live somewhere. So maybe else. they would perform here, so we could actually have people here. To Absolutely. Play once they once they got Absolutely, but that that performance won't happen. We're getting the 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 uh, the listening room portion of this space isn't happening until September. 
Right. We still have some lights and sound issues to work out. So, right. so they won't be performing here on, as, a, as a group until after September. But absolutely, I can't wait till they, they could play here because yeah. they're an amazing group of musicians. So there's hopes for you all. It really is. I know, because they're just teasing well, you. Like you're so awesome. generous. They're teasing. Yeah, yeah. They're saying, oh, well, we get to do this, but oh, well, well I don't think we can let the other people. Maybe not the other people. I'm right. just saying there's hope. The there's little hope people. That, that's it. The, the, yes. <laughs> the, the little people that are going to make all of this happen for us. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> we've really Friday, gone off the rails with you know, this <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, you know, every, every, every Friday and Saturday, we do have live piano. Which is... Here. Open to the public. Open to the public. Everyone. And it's yeah. there's no cost to participate. Just yep. show up here anytime between five and seven, and you're going to hear some amazing piano music. And and John knows some great musicians, so it's been a really cool Yes, you had, you had two different piano players. Two different, yeah. This weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really well, great. I was out of town. I was out of town. Um, uh, Friday night was a big show. We had a lot of people in the room. Yeah. Um, Saturday night, I had another private conference, a private event. Because really? yeah. you and Gerilyn were Gerilyn there, right? and I got to see a great show. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people ought to come to Saturday. It should be you and Gerilyn. <laughs> <laughs> the private listening. Yeah, never mind. I think so, too. Every Friday, Friday night, night don't, listen, <laughs> don't, don't listen to them. <laughs> Every Friday and Saturday night, there's live. So yeah, let's, let's get everyone. back on track. We're talking about okay. a deep dive. Right? So we're doing so deep what are we dive. Doing? So Tell us what we're doing. This wine was made back in 2012. 2012? 2012. 2012. So it's like nine years old. Nine years ago. Yeah, we got we've got one from 2011 here too. Wow. So your, we're your digging children in were still like in college. Yeah, they were little kids and yeah. living at home maybe yeah. at that point. <laughs> uh, no? 2012. They were both in college. They're both in college. Yeah. Okay. That's Actually, Max had graduated and Liana was still in college for senior year. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. We have a pretty good memory. Uh, yeah, I'm that's impressed. really amazing. <laughs> well, it's all pinned. It's all pinned. He's been by, drinking too. Uh, it's all pinned. <laughs> It's all pinned by Red Scare in yeah. 2008. That's how I remember the timing. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. That's how I do it because yeah, that's yeah. the first batch, and Max yeah. was a freshman in college. Yeah. Four years later, in 2011, he graduated. So, so just, before we go any further, yeah. what are what's the theme today? Because we, we have wine in our glass, and we're going to talk track. about this wine in a Deep second. Track. So, tell us about what the theme is. What have we done? So, as we've been exploring crafting wines from this region one of the things that we wanted to learn about was the ageability. How do these wines evolve and change over time? So whenever we made a batch of wine, or most of the times when we make a batch of wine, we would set aside some of that wine in our library. So we have a library of many, many, many cases. I of love wine. going through our it's, library. It's huge. Some of it's, you know, the boxes are collapsing, the <laughs> bottles are falling out. It's, We're gonna you know, fix that. It's a little bit of a, yeah. a hodgepodge right now, but. But I know you have plans down in the barrel room oh, to, yeah. to line the walls with our library with 2010, so 2011, 2012. Join, so yeah. everyone can come in and we can pull an yeah. old bottle. Yeah. So today, um, this is a not really a, a, a true tease in that you'll never get a chance to do this. If we have opened up a wine here that we enjoy and we think the public would enjoy, we're going to put the remainder of the case on sale in the tasting room so people can come in. We did this we know, did four or five months, months ago, ago, and most of those bottles are gone. Yeah, are gone. So we're doing this again. We have four wines this evening that we're going to try. We're starting off with a wine that was made in 2012. It was actually a blend of two separate wines. I had made our Three Honey wine in 2012. So this is a mead based on our Three Honey wine. But I had also made a Carboy. 19 liters, five gallons of rhubarb wine. From local Separate. rhubarb. Yeah, it was from uh, Lori Greenwood's backyard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it was Lori's, you, Lori. Lori's uh, backyard <laughs> rhubarb. And I put that up. And then I went through some trials of uh, blending it post-fermentation. Well, this is at Bob's house at 72. This is it. This is I, at I was going to say that. Yeah. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. This, this is, is in the basement. Yeah. It, this is listening no, to Old Led Zeppelin. 56 yeah. Taylor Road yeah. in yes. Sanberton. Yes. Yes. Taylor Road. Yes. 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 Right. Wow. That goes way back. That so is, here you go. Cheers. 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 So a nine-year-old vintage. Yeah. You know, it's evolving a lot. I, right after open? I poured it, I smelled it. I love doing this with old wines. Mm. The older, the better to see how they evolve as you as they expose as they the oxygen. Yeah. As they finally are released. They're trapped in this little bottle. And for those of you who don't know, a, a smaller bottle 
ages a wine, <clears throat> excuse me, more rapidly than a larger bottle. And a larger bottle ages it more slowly. So sometimes people in a particularly good year will put up, you know, magnums or double magnums or Jerobombs or huge bottles of a particular vintage. Right. Because then they'll age gracefully yeah. for decades. Right. Smaller bottles, some of the Pinot Noirs in Burgundy, my, my most coveted event with wine was a 62 Clos de Bougeau out of Burgundy, which was in a 375 milliliter. Oh, really? So Burgundy would often put their Pinots in these little bottles to get, get them. them to age more rapidly because they go into the bottles and they're just tannic, dry, no fruit monsters. And you wait and the fruit is there buried underneath the tannins. So you put it in a little bottle, you let the cork exchange the oxygen very slowly, and eventually that blossoms and does its thing. So you know what's wonderful So for us, this. what's interesting is to see how this changes. What's wonderful about this is, first of all, the very distinct and clear characteristic of a mead that you get on the nose. It's three honey. You yeah. get honey, you get that yeah. three honey characteristic, yeah. right? And I really, I really like that, that upfront three honey. It's just as strong as it would be right out of the- Yeah, you gotta you bring know. this home to Gerilyn first. Yeah, first. she's gotta yeah. try this. Yeah. She's, I hope she's watching. Gerilyn, you're gonna try this. But the nice thing is that the, the rhubarb comes through so nice in the finish. So it starts out with that honey and then it finishes with that rhubarb character, yeah. really bright. The rhubarb aroma is gone. It's one of the things that just the honey. I noticed when I opened it is there's like, what happened to the rhubarb? Where is it? But I get it on the back end. You, you get the flavor the coming out the end. And I still, long after I swallow, there's a sort of textural component to rhubarb when it's in a wine. Yep. Yep. It's, a, it's kind oh, of like a tans. rough sandpaper, but it's not digging into your skin harsh. It's just like a light touch of roughness. I don't know what it is, if it's the oxalic acid or some tannins or something in it, but to me, it's very characteristic of, of rhubarb. The spring in session does this. You, it's interesting you say sandpaper, because I, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but, but the last thing in the world I would describe is sandpaper. Oh, no, it's, this is smooth this as is silk. really smooth. Yeah, it's smooth as silk, but there's a, there's, a, there's a touch of a textural thing way after you swallow that is if you had rough sandpaper just grazing I don't know how that matters. If you had fine sandpaper touching you closely or rough it's, sandpaper it's the, touching light. That analogy doesn't work for me. Okay. I don't get yeah. sandpaper. No, I, I know, but I get the sense. I know, I know what he's talking right? about. My words I, are I failing well, yeah, uh, on it. Just uh, that one it's, word. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, well, the thing is I don't, you know, it's not viscous or slippery. It's a, there's a, a, a texture there or a bitiness. And it, to me, it's sort of an acidic thing that you, you get in the in the aftertaste that's that sort of is unique to it, it reminds me of when you were talking like if you've ever just eaten a raw piece of rhubarb and just chewed on it mm, and mm. what's left in your mouth after that is what i'm getting ah you get this. the acid that's the acid yeah. Bite. Yeah. it must yeah. be the acid so bite. It's, there's a yeah. there's a bite there's a there's a a, a uh uh a tartness or a bite or a bitterness that i get but uh, it doesn't. It's not important. Sandpaper doesn't no, work it, for me. No, sandpaper is not a good. If analogy. it works for you, it works. But and I, I, I get that too. I ate a, some cherries the other night as a dessert, just eating some cherries, yeah. and and they left a feeling, excuse me, <clears throat> in my mouth afterwards, right, from the acid or whatever that was there. Yeah, well, that's that that, that, that little bitiness that yeah, comes through. Yeah. It's not unenjoyable at all. No, no, no. And no, what's really lingering nice. when, I, when I'm just, as you're talking about lingering in your mouth, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what's going on in my mouth and I still have the honey. Yeah. It's like the honey's coated yeah. my mouth a little bit. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing I find interesting about this being, how old do we say this is 10? Nine years yeah, old. Nine years old. Nine years old, yeah. 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 2021. Uh, so uh, it has this great, I think honey lasts forever, but something in this is oxidized a lot. And the fruit in here is rhubarb. So this is somehow the, the, the rhubarb has um, that gone from that rhubarb flavor. The aroma is gone. In, yeah, all the aromas are gone. And you have that, um, it's like you've opened up a really, really aged bottle of red wine 
and it's RNG and, and you smell and it has those port notes in it. And this has a lot of rhubarb notes. Huh. Like are, oxidized, oxidized, oxidized rhubarb. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, it's, a, it's a unique, it's unique, but the honey itself just stood up. To the the honey the just, top. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm not even saying it's a problem. I think this well, is that's, you, and we know aged 300 wine is just the magic. Yeah, so, I think I mean, aged 300 wine will go on forever. Oh, look at that. So we are you sharing. I know that was yours I know, before. I tried to make it mine, but I have to share. So our deli presented us with this nice collection of, of meats and cheeses from our deli and also from local local farmers. We have some Fortuna sausage, some Vermont cheeses and uh, some a blueberry cheddar and some local crackers and some apples. So let's try and see what goes good with this one. What do you think? What's going to, you know, pick the best one here for this one. You know, I had a, a cracker and even that was too much. It's, these look I, like, you really, know, these are salty crackers too. I, I think I, you the know, salt would be powerful. With, with mead, I really enjoy Just it. Just like it alone. What about an own. apple? That might be nice because the apple's a very subtle sort of flavor, especially with a thin slice like that. How do they do that? They do that on the meat slicer? I don't know. It's nice. Got oh, to try an apple. Is that good? Try an apple. That's so apple the, that's would add, add a little bit of sweetness to that's it. The, yeah. That is the pairing right there. Yeah. It's, there's no doubt. It's perfect in my mind. I don't like them in the mouth together. But I like when I'm chewing the apple... I like smelling the wine. When I've swallowed the wine, I like the residual apple flavor, but I don't like that little bit in the middle. It's so funny because after I right. said it was perfect, yeah. I decided to chew the wine and the, and yeah. the apple together. Yeah. And that wasn't perfect. Yeah. That I had pieces of apple swirling around with the wine. It, yeah, wasn't no, right. wasn't it was the front and, and the, the back, back were perfect. Yeah. So have apple a bite though. of apple, chew it, and then have some right. meat right. or vice versa, have some meat and then chew some apple. I think the, mm. I, I, well, the mm. apple, it, it, what it made for me, it didn't change the wine at all, but it made the apple really sweet and really flavorful. Yeah. Just did the contrast and whatever is going to cleansing of the palate or whatever is going on there. I think that the is cheddar's it, okay, but is, it's the same thing. It's not, it's not better or worse. Yeah. It's just, it just works. Is this mead bone dry? Is there a zero? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do any back sweetening on it. So, yeah. Honey, when you ferment honey, there are some complex sugars within honey that are not fermentable. Yeast can't actually convert those to alcohol, but they taste sweet. So, so meads will ferment down and their final gravity is about the equivalent of water. So it, which is heavier than what most wines do. When you take a grape and you ferment it, the gravity of that liquid is actually less than water. Mm. So wine is lighter, less dense than water. Beer, when you ferment beer, is quite a bit heavier than water. So it has a, there's some carbohydrates in the malted barley that don't ferment out. And so in technical terms, in specific gravity, a beer may end up at 1010 or 1015. A wine may end up right at 10, zero, and then, and then uh, wines will go down into the negative 0.992 mm. or something like that. I never you know, like you just put two and two together for me. I've, we've always talked about specific gravity, but I never realized that it was specific to water. It's all based on water. <laughs> oh, you just yeah. saw the smoke. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's <laughs> the reference. Yeah. 60 degrees Fahrenheit at yeah. sea level like standard, standard is 1.0000 yeah, is water, yeah. distilled water. Yeah. So let's check in with our audience. All right, great. Yeah, Matt's on. He's on a, he's on a right. chair. And Matt's on a chair. Yeah. chair? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Oh, I see a few comments there from Yeah, Matt. just a few. So, hey, guys, I uh, really enjoyed being part of the piano bar two weeks ago. Piano bar, lovely piano good. player, and I'm going to come in again with some others. That's Marianne. Yeah. That's Excellent. great. Yep. Matt, uh, we're not doing well starving them for the saving them for the future. Oh, he's drinking all from his I know. library. I <laughs> saw that. I saw that post. <laughs> It's hard, Matt. It's, it's really that. hard. Do you know what you need to do? You find a friend like Bob, who's really good at saving stuff, and then you go over to his house and drink his wine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, if you come to my cellar, it's all gone. I've already drank it, but Bob still has it. There's, a, there's another solution, and this did work for me. I, I saved up a whole bunch of money, and I went to your friend, and I said, Oh, yeah, when you I want to build a yeah. cellar. So I just spent about three or four grand and filled my cellar all at once. So even if I was really not good at this, it would take a long time to drink all of that wine. So we can help really, you out with that. I know. Well, but the I goal, the goal really is soon. to do, do actually. If you, if you do it, people that are really well organized on this and let's say they want to drink $500 worth of well-aged wine a year, mm -hmm. every year they're buying $500 worth of wine that they're not going to drink for another five, seven, 10 years. But they started 15 years ago and they continually rotate. They're always drinking well-aged wines. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's so the, the, the one-time purge of doing all that is okay, but some of those are going to age out or some that are going to be tasting really nice. You don't have anything coming later well, on. When I, when I did it, I bought, I told uh, your friend. Gordon, I remember yeah, you. To yeah. buy me, to, to, to let me purchase five-year wines, 10-year wines, and 20-year wines. Ah. That's, that was, that the was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. So some nice wines. I'll get to go drink some 10 year old wines. I mean, yeah. if you're looking for us later, Gerald, and we'll be at your house drinking Bob's wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so what did Lori, so Lori, say, Lori yeah. to say? She has a 2013 Melange, a 2014 Not Mead, and a 2018 Not Sap Mead. And I'm going to guess that based on that collection of wines, that she's doing just fine. As long as those wines were stored correctly, yeah. those are all going to be absolutely so lovely. So tell wines. people about storage, Bob. Because that is, that's important. It is Very important. important. Um, it, it, this stuff is fragile. A classic wine cellar is maintains a certain uh, humidity that is probably around what we say sixty or seventy percent, and, oh, and, bar. and a, uh, a dark environment. And so humidity is important. Dark is important, and temperature. Uh, typically, somewhere between fifty and sixty degrees for most wines, and. And, uh, and the wines, if they have a cork in them, must be laid down on their side. And uh, all of those things are really important. And probably of, of the most importance is that each of those things is consistent. So if the temperature is swinging or the, or the uh, humidity is swinging high and low from season Quickly, to season. Yeah, you want it to go slowly. Slow okay. changes, yes. Then, uh, then that can be a problem. Actually, if, if you have a New England basement that doesn't have a heat source in it, uh, a New England basement can be ideal for wine storage. You don't need to have any special technology at all. Um, That's where my wine is. Yeah. You've seen my basement. You spent plenty it's, of time yeah, there. It's, Help me out. It's perfect. <laughs> so, he has a river. He has a, he has a, have a, basement. a waterfall a time, and a river. It's really a It was built thing. in the 1700s. I know. They, they didn't they, have they all just had rocks back or Maybe then. they did have it figured out. They had their wine they now. They did. They did. So uh, if you don't have the ability to have all of those great uh, uh, characteristics in your cellar, then a lot of people will just buy a, a wine fridge that will allow you to keep your wines at, at precisely the right temperature that you want to keep them at and humidity. Um, and they can range from a, a fridge for what, 20 or 30 bottles to yeah. have 100, 200 bottle fridges. I think Matt just, just bought one. So, uh, uh, just add it to the fridge. You got to fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, see, he's drinking it all, so he's got plenty of room. He's got a problem there. <laughs> there go, so, so there it is. So if you have nice wines and you want to, you want them to stay nice, you need to make sure you store them correctly. Um, do some research. I bet you can find something on Google about storing wines correctly, and you certainly could find a nice wine fridge if that's what you need. So. Well, and Ken has room in his um, my so basement. His basement. Everybody. I got a great New England old yeah. basement. Please, so, yeah. please store your Send wine your in my place. Yeah. That's there's a, there's a small there's Send, a small surcharge. That's all. <laughs> One bottle a month or something. Is that what a, week. <laughs> a week. A <laughs> week. And look at that. We got Chelsea on here, and Gerilyn is here. Hi, Gerilyn. This is a great meet. Gerilyn You're really going to like this. Yes. Oh no. Can, oh no. Oh no. Sorry, Gerilyn. That was. was a yeah. So so Bob. Nice job. You know. Ben. Yeah, no, you know we can we can put these out for sale to the public, but there's a bottle over there that you should bring home for Gerilyn because oh. she really needs to try this. Do you hear that, Gerilyn? And we got one for you. I'm thinking maybe we should take one home. I, I need yeah. to take one of these home. Yeah. So, so. You're going to, Gerilyn, see, she needs some three honey to store. <laughs> you know, to store she's not good at storing it, though. Store. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She, I bring it home and I, you know. She does store it. She's yes. gonna, she stores it for a yeah, she stores couple it. days in her tummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, we've got more wine to drink. We got okay, more so wine. So uh
So Lori, Lori Putman says she did good. So, uh, what, uh, so, good so we're talking about music alive. and deep tracks. So what deep music tracks. comes to mind for you? Ah. Right. So what deep track did we just uncover here? That's interesting. So this is old yeah. Genesis oh, for me. Oh, really? <laughs> Trespass. Trespass. Their, their, their first commercial yeah. album, which I still listen to today, without a doubt. It's contemplative, complex music, but it's still sort of mainstream rock and roll. This is the old original Genesis with Peter Gabriel, and that's that's my mead. That's your one. mead. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. We need oh, to get. How some about water. you? What do you What do you think? Yeah. Of? Well, we need so to get some water because we can't have the mead in the glass when we pour the next one. I got another glass right here. You got another? Got glass? Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, the first thing that came to mind for me was Fleetwood Mac. Oh. And because they're a, a band whose music, I, oh, I was out sailing in San Francisco Bay the other day, and the, the, the captain of the boat was playing feel all, good music. Yeah, all the way playing good all music. old, you know, old stuff, and and, uh, and he paid a, a, a lot. So it's not so much that um, that uh, there's something about this that I have a story that, that, that as you do, but it just it's fresh in my mind. But it goes back to something that's aged well. I mean, I love, I still love Fleetwood Mac. I've always loved Fleetwood Mac, and uh, so, um, and I would just, I would just say, Rumors album for me. Oh yeah, that's that that's goes back that's as far album. as far as music goes back in my life. The Fleetwood Mac Rumors album is me because my father had that album, and when I was, yeah. I don't know, eight or nine or ten or whatever, I remember that album very distinctly. I love the cover of that album, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Covers, and I yeah. used awesome. to play it. All the time. It was one of my very yeah. earliest exposure yeah. Yeah. to 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 music. That's where a deep track gets worn out. Yeah, exactly. that's a worn out track. My deep track for this is is Led Zeppelin. Hallowest was one. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's a very deep track. That's a lot of music. That's a lot of music. Yeah. But yeah. we spent so yeah. many yeah. nights. Yeah. Geraldine yeah. remembers yeah, yeah. with with yeah, yeah. Yeah. maybe maybe, maybe, not, maybe not fondly. <laughs> she has to teach the next day, and we're down there at one in the morning making wine with Hallowest the floor was one. with a shop vac and yeah. a mob. <laughs> Thankfully, she was on the other side of the house, so yeah. she didn't get too disturbed. But, but uh, easy for me to well, say. <laughs> Sorry, Carolyn. <laughs> but that's my deep track. All right, so now now we're going wild here. This is um, a wine from 2014. 2014. That was made out of like kiwi berries. No so, way. So really? kiwi berry is a very unique fruit. There are 26. I think different varieties of kiwis on earth. On earth, twenty-six that we know of, uh, or that I can recall. Uh, uh, U N H says there's three hundred. No, no, no. Those are varieties of kiwi berries. Right. Those are just varieties, not like. What am I trying to say? I don't know. It's not a. It's not a. Um, it's like major groupings of fruit. You know, it's like a, 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 a crab apple or a sweet apple or a bitter apple. Okay. 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 So they're like so this is a sub variety. Twenty six, but then you within those main groupings, there might be like apples have seven thousand yeah. varieties. It's like little dogs and big dogs. There's a whole bunch of little dogs and a whole okay. bunch of big dogs, but they're probably twenty different types of too much. But they're still dogs. <laughs> There's still yeah, but some of them really aren't dogs. I mean, the hairless like, little. Okay, dogs. so let me start over. Restart. So, so, dog, so let's start over now. Like okay, so this is made out of a fruit called a kiwi berry. There are quite a few different types of kiwi berries. Could be hundreds. Who knows? Um, we found out about this from Greg Me at yeah. um, Cold Garden Distillery in Canterbury. So before he had the distillery, he was and continued to grow all sorts of different fruit. Yeah, yeah. And one and of them was a kiwi berry. And he had a banner and I, year. I reached year. out to him about kiwi berries, and that's how I first learned about kiwi berries. So when we first opened, remember this? This went <laughs> I, national. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, oh, I remember oh. you. I remember you talking with Ken. We had like ten bottles of kiwi wine <laughs> when we first opened in 2011 in Samberton, New Hampshire. And the Concord, the Concord paper did a story on us, right. and the and the uh, the the, the, AP, the national the AP the, news picked story up. picked it up and took picked up the headline, and the headline had had kiwi berry in it, and and so. We had like 10 bottles of this wine yeah, and people it. were calling from all over the country <laughs> wanting to get this kiwi berry wine they were making. Well, 
we're sold out. It's been so popular. How many, how many carboy of this did you make? One, I think. One. Maybe two. <laughs> that was so. That was <laughs> so. In 2010, those were kiwi berries from Greg's three yeah. vines yeah. that he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it. since then, we got excited about working with the fruit, and I'm hoping to return to working with this fruit because I haven't worked with kiwis since 2015. We scaled up, and it's a complicated fruit. I I have not figured out how to work well with this fruit, and. This bottle already, to me, as I smell this, is telling me that right in my face. It's got a very bold, over-the-top aroma, which is very unique and not immediately accessible, probably, for a lot of people, myself included. We were, these kiwi berries came from an organic grower <clears throat> in Pennsylvania. Oh, what's that guy's kiwi name? Kiwi Dave. Kiwi Dave, yeah. Kiwi right. Dave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had been growing like kiwi berries from the 80s or 90s. He's the largest grower of organic kiwi berries in the, in the country. country, right? Yeah. yeah. So we hooked up with him, but it was very complicated to get these berries because the, the berries are really interesting. Most of us know kiwis as that furry fruit, right. you know, sort of brown and furry on the outside, and you slice it open and you can scoop out or de-skin it. And you get that green flesh with those little black seeds. Mm -hmm. It's tangy. It's lively. It tastes fantastic. It's beautiful on a fruit salad or on a cake or a pie or whatever. Well, these little kiwi berries look identical on the inside. They're the green flesh with yep. the little black yep. seeds, the same lively tanginess. But they have a smooth skin yep. that's sort of green with a red blush to it. Yep. And you kind can like eat grape. them like a yeah. grape. Yeah, like it's a grape. smooth skin. You eat the whole thing. It's awesome. So they became very popular because they're a, a great source of vitamin C. They're very nutritious. They reach very high sugar levels. As high as, really, a as high as a wine grape, which is really come in at 30 bricks one. Yeah, 30 bricks one. Yeah. That's crazy. That's California Zin. Yeah, it comes in most, on a good year at 30 yeah. bricks. Most wine and grapes people bleed off some 28 of 28 bricks. So they don't have so much, alcohol, so much sugar, which turns into alcohol. Yeah. So anyway, this is, I, we had a case in our library, so I wanted to see what it was like. And what's interesting, it's, it's cloudy. Yeah. And I had this trouble before, and I've asked a couple of wine experts about this sort of situation happening. No one had an answer because nobody spends too much time with kiwi berries and wine. They're mostly working with yeah. Chardonnay or Sauv Blanc or, or what have you. This was sterile filtered. It was brilliantly clear when it went into the bottle. And then later on, my notes when I reviewed it earlier today was within a year, it started to throw a little fine sediment. And then the aroma gets more intense and a little more funky. Some of this was turned into a commemorative wine called Rebel Rebel. In 2015 oh was the year that David Bowie died. And speaking of music, we named a wine yeah. along the lines of this Rebel outlier Rebel. Yeah. called Rebel Rebel. And it's it was a carbonated Rebel. version of kiwi berry that was, that was watered down a little bit to lower the alcohol. Yeah, it's like a session. And crown cap. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I remember during the bottling of that wine, we just listened to David Bowie through the, yeah. through the whole yeah. sequence. Yeah, that's David Bowie. So what do you think? So I think... I've got another decade of working with kiwi berries, and I can't wait to go through this. But as it is, I think there's going to be one in a hundred people that get excited about the aroma. It's so intense. Flavor. It's so intense. It's so intense. It's unique, and I like it. And I I look forward to where we go with it because I I think there's so much here. This is a unique fruit, and it grows wonderfully in this northern climate. So you can grow it here in New Hampshire. New UNH is trying to. To promote it as a as a as a local crop, so more and right. more farmers are picking it up. But and the fruit itself is wonderful. You find a kiwi berry in a farmer's market, buy them and eat yeah. them. They're so yeah. delicious. Yeah. They're, yeah. But I do think that there's an enormous depth and breadth of experimentation that can go through here. And uh, yeah, and as it, I, it's probably about blending, which you're that's learning exactly, more about. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's so what I was going to so say. So, do you remember the vinification? So this is so this came in. This came in at a high bricks. You yep. diluted it with some water. With some water. Yep. 
And then did you capitalize it as well during the process? Yep. Yep. To then bring I added it some back sugar to, to get the, the 13% or no, so. Is, there, is, there, is yep. there anything else in there? Did you use oak or There's a, some apple wine. So from the very beginning, we found that blending some apples with the kiwi went really well. And the first vintages, there was quite a bit of apple in 2012 and 2013. 2014, this I had, it was only half a percent of apple wine that went into it. That's, a, that's a, it's like elderberries. Elderberries right. by themselves are too intense. It's too intense. And yeah. kiwis by themselves yes. are too and intense. And that's, right. that's what, as I look right. back on my, my immature, my earlier winemaking days, and I'm thinking to myself, why did I try to do a straight kiwi? Well, because I shouldn't you have to have a, a, a standard sort of a baseline. You have to, you I know. Have to it's the, it's the exploration. Right. Right. But what I'm blown away by this is what, what did we say this was 14? 14. Yeah. So seven years old. Um, it, it has it, it has a little bit of almost an effervescence. Mm, it does. Which it is, definitely does. Which, you know, who knows what that's about. But it has so much kiwi flavor. And it's and it's dulled the, the sharpness of it a lot. It's it softened aged, it. It's yeah. actually aged really well, yeah. and it's lost a lot of that acidity. But it's maintained all that flavor for this long for a uh, fruit wine, right? That's I, what I, I yeah. would think that this would be much more oxidized and completely uninteresting. And I I think that you know as a as vinification goes, I mean I think probably a blend of something less stringent or I don't even know stringent is word less powerful, let's say, because kiwi has that, you know, if you go to the farmer's market and eat a kiwi, you get that puckery acid. I don't know what the chemistry is yeah. there, but it's a lot. Right, right. it's like and pineapple. So gotta, yeah. it, it seems like that would be, that being tempered, but with the, the, the longevity that this has had, I mean, how would we ever know otherwise? I mean, nobody else on earth is doing this. Or making I've got an idea. Experimenting. Just came like to me too. We could distill this. Because oh, those those flavors. Were all right, all right, gentlemen. Right, let's get focused again. Right? <laughs> you know saying, where we're going oh, here. Just saying, just saying, just saying we have you know eleven so, bottles in a case so that we, you know, deep, deep we don't. Track know. Wise, so deep track wise, getting back on focus. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go with David Bowie. Because, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, you already so already. Yeah, this is a Bowie wine. Going. I'm gonna suggest that we. I agree with the David Bowie, actually, by the way, but I'm going to suggest that we, let's move on. Let's go to the next wine. We have, we're, you know, how time flies on this show. We have two more wines to go through, and I want to get through them both. Okay. There's a good story behind both of them. My suggestion is probably, though, that this wine is ready to go back into the cellar and remain a library wine for a few more years. Is that, would you agree? I was going to just still it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help himself, could he? <laughs> so... So this will not be available for sale on the shelf, Correct. is what you're saying. It's really, that's really the point that I was trying to make. Okay. Well, we should, Whatever you yeah. want to do with it, we you do try it. to find someone to distill it to see what that's like. But we are going to need a rinse, for sure, yeah. now, yeah. before yeah. we pour yeah, the next one. Sure. Uh, okay. So um, this is really a, a, an amazing sequence of wines to go through because they have a lot of memories. This one is a second press one. Oh, no. Remember when we did, uh, 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 I, I won't say the words, but BP was the, the, the phrase that we would <laughs> use. <laughs> you, you, know, my, you had to say it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, was so this, yes, this was made in 2011. Check out that cork. That's a nickel cork and it's the best one so far. This yeah. darn thing was a buck yeah. and it's, you know, Squished out and not aging right, and and this. Pictures. So, but there's a good there's a good reason that we called it that, and it was just to show because right. when we were um, pressing these uh, um, whatever's left of these poor things, and Bob and I had a 25 foot long a bar to get more leverage on it. We, we the thing was close to the ground or whatever, and we all we could find. That was sterile was a <laughs> you know that's still staple gun to the rafters in the brewery at my house i kid you not right up there with an 06 <laughs> sangiovese you were like oh we gotta save the so, end of the placard and you, you but, staple gunned it up but the good news is that this wine was not made with a bedpan no this it was, was actually no, made no, no, with no, other no, tools no, no. i'm gonna check in back into the audience look at this it was put in a clear bottle <laughs> That's so, right. Let's see. 
Oh my God. So, so let's see. Uh, get a couple other comments. The so we didn't here. talk about the, the, the true aspect of this wine is the second press. We're looking that way now. Forget the bedpans. Yeah, I'm seeing if you have any comments I want to, uh, any questions that we need to respond to. You want something, John? Yeah, there's no questions going on here. Just some comments, but thank you. Back to the uh, conversation. What, so let's let's get back to bedpan. All right. So, I'm sorry. Did you just call it? He did. He did say that. I think he's been here. The marketing department's had a few uh, classes. <laughs> no, that's a good story. Come on, stop it. That's a good story. So that it is, says it, it, says it right here oh, on it really? the back of the label. Listen to this. No way. Listen to this. Marketing was on their game here. Absolutely. Following the gentle pressing of our Chilean Carmenere oh, well, and yeah, Cabernet okay. grapes, oh, yeah. okay. we re-fermented the remaining fruit, still with plenty of color, flavors, and tannins by adding sugar and water. A practice pursued by many winemaking families over the centuries and in keeping with our philosophies and in step with what we think the hermit would applaud. The result is an easy drinking red wine for everyday consumption. I, who wrote that? That's really, you did. That's really well, well done. done. <laughs> yeah, nice. Like Cheers it. to that. Hey, there's a story in every bottle, and in this case, on the back of the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. We, we, we brought these very expensive grapes all the way up from South America. Mm. We made our premium wine that went into the barrels, and the fruit still had flavor and color. So being really, we didn't put the right this on the, the back, but being the, the Yankees, Yankees that we are, that we, are <laughs> we wanted to retain that. Well, that was where it said, kind of in line with how the hermit oh, would have, would have done Oh, this is things. not bad. No. I was, I was looking back through my notes today, and I, we had, I had all sorts of troubles with this wine, with this, this particular batch. There's only 106 bottles of this. We Never saved made. a case of it. Ever met. Oh, okay. There wasn't that much. 2011. This we, is our first year we, open we, to the public. Did we really put that in a clear bottle? And we put it in a clear bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those were the amateur years. <laughs> no, no, I think it was the frugal years. You know, they were cheaper. Frugal were, and amateur yeah, years. Damn, that's not bad at all. Yeah. It's not bad at all. You know what? I can think another five years in the cellar would actually do it good. <laughs> well, that's not well, bad after, at all. After reading the, the, the story on their... That's going to go with the cheese, too. It talked about the, Try with that. the, the flavor mm -hmm. that was the left in, in the skins of the Carmenere. Carmenere is a, it's, uh, a grape that was in Bordeaux mm -hmm. before phylloxerous in the 1880s. Yep. It got wiped out because this bug from the United States went over there and killed all the French grapes and, and whatnot. And then they replanted with American rootstock and planted in the How brilliant was that? And, so Americans, yeah, the Americans American, both we destroyed the European crop right, and, and then, then we saved it. it. And, then it back. Yeah. and but in South America, <laughs> it's very American of us. I, it was the, very American. The, of us. the people who immigrated to Chile had brought this rootstock with them from France, and they didn't get phylloxera because they're protected by deserts and, and oceans. And so they still had Carmenere down there, so you can still get first on original original you know what's carmenere. what's ironic is that they didn't ah. know they had carmenere they, 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 they thought it was merlot, merlot. Yeah. It was merlot. Yeah. until the 90s yeah, yeah. right we're right. dna testing yeah right so uh to go to you're like story. an encyclopedia no, of knowledge no, on the no, carmenere just, there man no i listen to bob when he tells his stories so <laughs> uh but what's interesting about this is that in, in the description you said well because that that fruit has so much flavor left in in the skin there's still some and that the what you really get in this wine is exactly that it's that carmenere flavor it's not like anything else there's like a like an olive yeah well, there's yeah. like olive or yeah, olive oil or, or a character very, to it that, so oh uh, look at so, you going in so so uh, so bravo everybody. This was this is years wow. later, and and the experiment I would say is a yeah. success. Ten years later, this is the oldest wine we're drinking tonight. This yeah, is this is the oldest one. Ten, ten years old. Absolutely fine. It's still holding up. Bottle, Look at the color in a clear bottle. Yeah, which you better even, make sure you're with, storing in a dark location for the sure. Cheapest cork <laughs> we've ever bought in our whole yeah. life. Like in still America. holding up. Cork that's only you know whatever. That's our nickel cork. cork. It's a nickel cork. Yeah. And it it's still bright red all the way to the edge. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing. I, I mean, I bet you this wine will be around in 20 years. 
we'll still be able to drink it and, and it'll be even better. Well, that's like our 09. That's the one we squoze with the 20 foot pole. Yeah. In, in my barn. <laughs> that one's got the, well, the only gotten better. That has yeah. taken 10 years to get But it's to get still getting better. Yeah. It's still, still not better. there yet. It needs another decade or two. It needs another decade or two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. Wow. Well, that's all right. We'll be around a decade. I hope you'll join us wow. when we're here a decade from now. So this was a few years. You know, it was the year 2014 was the last time we imported grapes. We made a, we right. made a leap at that point. I when remember talking here, about it. We decided. It was, it was right after we moved here. We opened up the tasting room here in spring of 14, right? Yep. No, uh, winter, February of 14. Yeah, spring of early, early, early 14. And then we still imported grapes that fall or that spring because they were Chilean. Yeah. That was one of, oh, I love this. We imported grapes in this it. building? Yes, in 14. Because hmm. the last yeah, batch we did was 14. Okay. And so that had to be here. Um, what I liked about early on, we got hooked into Chilean grapes from Beer Wine Hobby and Wilburn Mass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were higher quality grapes than what we were yeah. getting down on the docks Let's in Boston. Yeah. They were the, you know where they were coming from? They were coming from the, the uh, who those folks down in Hartford that we, uh, M&M. Oh, uh, M &M. Uh, M &M. M &M. M &M. Yeah, they were. That's where Beer and Wine yeah. got their That's grapes. Got. M and M was the the premium. They probably still are the the number one importer of, for those. of uh, grapes yeah. from California and other parts of the world. Yeah, but I what I that actually that whole experience of where we started that was great. Break, go on, if you're yeah. if you're a home winemaker, try it. Absolutely, Just do it sometime. Just go get some grapes. The first grapes. time we did it, don't do this. No, <laughs> this part, yeah. We went down to the Boston. Moving Bucks. on. <laughs> All right, moving on. We only have so many minutes left. Three minutes? No, no, so many minutes. We have okay. seven minutes left. Seven minutes. Oh, seven. Seven. Okay. Okay. So this pairs right. well with uh, all the, the meats and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Pairs well, like, well with everything. Just to drink. <laughs> open the next bottle, Ken. <laughs> That's really. I, I love. I love the fact that we're able to not waste the. Characteristics. All of this would have gone into the compost. It was the fruit. This, this was made from the spent grape. So you ferment, you squeeze off, you get your premium wine. Where did wine. you learn how to do this? I don't know. I read, about, I read about. I read a lot of books on this. No, it was before Google. Before Google, Google was yeah, just starting. But, but this yeah, was, was just wow. There wasn't even wow. Wikipedia back then. We're dating ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was Google. Yeah, we were using it, but. But still, I love the fact that we're able to do. We did. Remember, we did a second press crab apple. I don't remember that. We did a second I do press remember crab that. apple. I do remember that. I don't yeah. know where they ended up. I don't know. We, we probably so have some in the library. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> probably didn't make the library. I have a first edition. Right, of um, I have the uh, edges. Mm. The edges. Um, Edge of the ledge. No edges. No edges. Oh that's yeah, edges. I think that's, that was a Kickstarter version. I think Kickstarter that's version. that. I think that's twenty thirteen. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, because that's it when was, we were doing Kickstarter. That was here, moving here, and we ran yeah, out of money. That was 2013. That's, one, that's one of the times we ran out of money. Yeah. Yes. And Thank all, you to all, you. All the generous people who came and helped us out because we wouldn't have been able to do it so, without yeah, them. So that was the Kickstarter version. That was the Kickstarter version. If you donated enough program. money to our Kickstarter campaign, you got to they name a wine and get it put on the label yes. as your wine. I think he got a case. I've got a, I still I, we still have some in the library. There's still some in the library. Edgy's, edgy's red or edgy something yeah. red. But it was edgy's the Carmen house, Air, yeah. the, 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 not the first press yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm going to check, in with, our, back, I'm gonna check in with our customers here. See if we've right. got any, our group. Yeah, let's see if we got any comments that we should, or questions. All right, I'll chug while you're doing that. Priscilla says, 10 years old, decade or decayed? <laughs> That's very good, <laughs> Priscilla. <laughs> Whoa, look at the color of this one. Well, this is always this way, even when it's brand new. Oh. So uh, let's see. A good bottle of wine at best can oh, have you. Wow. Holy sh sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Well, Priscilla's got lots of interesting Chill comments. Chill laying. She's our pun master. Thank you, Priscilla, for <laughs> laying puns. Lame puns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob, wait till you try this. Wow. I don't think you can get this any other way than this right here, right now. This is crazy. 
Greg Farley says, what a romantic way of saying you crushed the living daylights out of what you had left. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Yes. It's called finesse. Greg. I think, you know, Greg shared a picture of him and his buddies crushing the daylights out of some fine grapes out of California. Well, you didn't share that with us. You should share that. that. So Matt wow. says he'd like to, Ken, are you signing the library wines? Of course we are. Of course, for you, Matt. Especially, no Matt. We'd absolutely sign them for you. I don't know what you want to of, but you let us know because we'll, we'll be sure and, and make sure. And Greg Farley says, bed pan distillery. <laughs> That's a winner for sure. <laughs> 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 oh my God! We are going to be in so much trouble I know. when he comes here. When he comes here, we're going to be in serious trouble. Our livers are going to pass oh out. God. So, guys, we have four minutes. Oh, wait till you try this brown, what are we this brown monster. This brown monster. Yeah, I'm not even going to tell you. Oh. 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 Whoa! That's the spice cabinet right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild. There's like cardamom and all sorts, yeah. but there's no spices added. No, of course not. That's, this is a single fruit. That's the spice cabinet. That's when you, oh, that's amazing. I've never smelled anything like I that. I haven't smelled anything like this that is until amazing. right this moment. Is this some of that old one? It's old. How old yes. is it? This one is um, I wish 2013. I, was, I wish I was good at Eight years old. pulling out because there are some very distinct characteristics in the nose that I could name, but I don't, I'm not good at that. What are we smelling? So what are part, of this, part of this is you walk through a bramble patch oh, when the flowers are out, when, when blackberries are in bloom and all the bees are hovering around all the white flowers, you get this grassy, herbal, spicy aroma. I wish I could name the spices. They're so clear. There's in the nose, just the nose, there are these you amazing- You get nutmeg, nutmeg. cinnamon, a lot of no, there's something more, but more, there's uh, too. I mean, yeah, there's what, what something more, on? more, uh, earthy, earthy than truffle. No, because I don't like truffle, I don't like the aroma of truffle. There's something it's else, wow, it's a great nose. I, I, this, I, this I, the aroma is the aroma, I haven't tasted it yet. I haven't tasted it yet. It's either. really good. Yeah. So you must have gone to the perfume cabinet, I did. And I went to it. I took Maya's perfumes and I just dumped just them all dumped in the them barrel. You here. did yeah. not. You wouldn't yeah. do that. I wouldn't do that. And, I didn't and, do well, that. No, you went to the spice cap. That's what it was. So you got all spice. You have all spice, nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, all the apple pie things, and then blended it with something that's some to it, something with tannins, and then you fermented it and you put it in an oak barrel. It's so cool to taste this because wow. I remember making this wine and I was like, way too thin, way too much water, great flavor, not great not potential. Anymore. And so now how I craft this wine mm. has really concentrated these notes and I figured out how to get it going so, on. So you know what's so great about this? So, you know, I don't know if this is the, you know, the next great thing in the world of wine. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. You're creating some aromas that don't exist. You know, there's no other wine I've ever had that has these unique, intense aromas. But they're great. They're very pleasant. They're very enjoyable. I, I, I'm glad to smell these new yeah. and unique yeah. aromas. But they don't exist in the world of wine. No. And, and then it follows up with this taste that is also unique. It carries through. What I was a little concerned that the flavor wouldn't follow the aroma, that they would be disjointed. But it it's does. not. It follows nicely. It absolutely does. It's still... Thin. It's like some burgundies I've had, yeah. where you get this incredible aroma. No, you're and right. You, and you, you're waiting for this mouth-filling weight of the wine to have that. Yeah. And when burgundies do that, you're just overwhelmed yeah. in, in bliss. It's yeah. your favorite music, so it's, it's all like the, the way amped up in the, you know, with a live performance. It's like the the intensity of the fruit is in isn't fully in, you know, when, when you taste it, you don't get the full, you don't get that fruitiness coating your mouth. Right, right. right. It's, it's just a little bit hollow. It's a little bit, um, 
but not, I mean, it's still amazing. I still get that aroma. It follows through. I still get interesting flavors that reflect the aroma. What is it, Ken? It's made 100% <laughs> out of organic blackberries. Organic blackberries. So we call this black oak. How appropriate. This was the first time. This was in the marketing department. It was really this, on their game. This is. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was the first time that I made a large enough batch to put it into an oak barrel. This was the same year, 2013, when I first put red scare into an oak barrel. This is also the first year when I put elderberry into an oak barrel. It's in 2013. You know what this so tells this me? Is, this, which you know, is the, really this tells me what what this whole event, this whole day or show has has says has said to me is that we're we're just at the very beginning. Oh, I know. At it's the so, very I, beginning, I want to be twenty years old right now with this stuff. Yeah, I have a lot. There's so much that I that's going do. on that I, we can explore. That, that well, hasn't this all been done before? I mean, can't you just go to France and get some nice blackberry stuff and put it in the barrel and whatnot? Yeah. I, I, I would love you to be able to anywhere. answer yes and say that, but I've never found that. No, because if I could that find that, that, I could have someone to talk to and say, fast forward me 20 <laughs> years. What is all the stuff that you did? Yeah. No, 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 none of this. I've worked with blackberries That's every amazing. year since. And none of this really, has been done before. Right. What's really fascinating to me is I've made changes in how I've handled blackberries ever since then, and I think I'm going in the right path. When you had the 2020 Hermitage the other day, in our last or two Facebook Lives ago, I'm starting to be able to bring some of the fruit and intensity and weight into the wine Yep. along with it. The problem is it's really, really expensive because it's just pure blueberry or blackberries. You can't add water. This I added water, and it thinned it out. It was too much. So when it I make blackberry matter. wine, blackberries matter. are really juicy fruit. So yeah. I've got to use it straight up, and that's why I do it all the time. Now. Well, that's the way you should do it. Doesn't matter. The, the, it's not about money. It's just about no, no. That's what. Next that's what's great. I'm sorry. No. Excuse me. I'm just gonna say it. Uh oh. Money oh, matters. Here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> A little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah. Thank you He's for bringing, bringing, us, bringing yeah. us back down to earth, Jack. <laughs> Cheers. Money matters. All right, money matters. <laughs> money matters. <laughs> but so, and the other question so, is, this is this is matter too. this is another wine that I think we're going to hold on to a couple bottles. A couple bottles. Yeah. So wait a minute. So we, we, we can share. So can this, right? You're, can, you're marketing. You get to so decide. How you want to forget do marketing. For two. We've got four wines we brought out today. Which wines do you want to make available to our to our our friends out in the world who are watching us today. Which wines are you going to, because I, because not all of these are ready for prime time or they're past prime time, one or the other. What, 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 uh, what are the well, four the wines only, we have? The only want? outlier is the Kiwi. Okay. The other three are straight up very unique and drinkable, tasty, drinkable wines. The Kiwi, st we still have people that come in wanting to have Rebel Rebel. I know they, that they, was they missed popular. that wine. That was very and popular. this has that rebel rebel. Right, but character. it's very different from rebel rebel. Rebel rebel was a was a low alcohol. We lightened it up. Carbonated. We made it a little less intense. Yeah, this is not, full this, on. This is full on. This is you know this is mainlining rebel rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this is like boom. <laughs> but I think the the kiwi is the only one that we set aside. We cellar it down, or so we the just, other we distill it, and. Um, <laughs> And and that's it. And the others, the, the other, other three, three are going to be available. I think, I think we hold back, you know, some for ourselves and for well, that doesn't future. matter. They're either available but, for sale or they're not. Are they available for yeah. sale? Oh yeah. The yeah other three? Everybody, especially everybody on today, we should write Paula, Gary, Greg. We should write their names on a bottle if they want a bottle. All mean? the people that signed in today that said they were here, send us a note. If Tell they want, if they want a bottle. We should write their name on the bottle. Yeah, and say no. Absolutely, we'll be happy to reserve here. a bottle. They're here. They're chiming yeah. in. No, no. Happy, to, happy questions. to reserve a bottle. But okay. these wines will be on the shelf that we dedicate. That special shelf we dedicate to only club members. Oh, it depends how many people are out there, too. Because 
Yeah. If there's more well, there's than 10, seven, then... There's only 7 people on right now, so... Okay. So we're all getting more right. But okay. the thing is that a lot more people see this over later. It, yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with how many people are on now or later no, or whatever. No, I mean about the, the people who are on right is, now. No, yeah, they, no, they no, the bottom people line people is, if you're people listening people. to us right now or later, I don't care. Let us know if you want a bottle of this. We'll put your name on it. We'll hold it for you. Right. That's okay. simple as that. Is that all right? Yeah, no, that's totally so fair. Is that fair? That's totally that's fair. Okay. That, we that need fair? to be fair. We don't have to be fair. We don't? No. Of course we do. Oh. What we do have to do is come up with a deep track. We don't have to be bottle. fair. <laughs> that's what he that's said. What all about. He's not marketing. No, the last bottle, the last bottle of don't uh, listen to wine, you. we don't have a deep track. Oh. And then we need a deep track oh. for this one. Oh. And I'm just going to uh, thank you. For well, you better say All right, I got, because, I got uh, one right now. Because we're about we're ready over. to end the show. We're over. I'm gonna, we're, we're over. over. Yeah, I'm going to go along back to the audience power. here. This is a Jimi Hendrix. This is a Jimi Hendrix. This is a Jimi wine right here. Yeah. Are you experienced? This is Jimmy Matt, Matt wants us to sign the bottles again. You guys know you have to sign the bottles. So if Matt or is I'm happy to course, sign the bottle for you, Matt. Sign the bottle. We can find always. It. That's an no honor. problem. No problem. It's an honor that you even ask us to sign the bottles. We're we're uh, we're, we're very oh, man, honored. By this that. stuff. Thank you, Matt. This stuff's really okay, cool. So Bob Dylan. Oh, Bob for the, Dylan. For the black Gary Parker book. says deep purple. Deep purple. Deep purple. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's oh, you this go, is Gary. so. This is so, Gary. <laughs> oh, yes. We got to talk about deep purple. <laughs> we got to talk this, quickly because we're. Uh, yes, no, we're no, no, no. This is this is, another, this is another conversation over a, a a bottle or two of wine, Gary. All right. Deep and purple. Then, deep purple goes way back in my history. Uh, excellent. And for me, deep track for cottage red is cheap trick. Cheap trick. Cheap trick. I love it. Thank you for so long. You know, cheap trick has a really, you know, that goes back for me a long time. See, that's I have no history with them. Wow. I have no history with them. That's other amazing. than switching channels. Thank you for bringing that up, Chuck. That's great. So go. listen, we're, we've come to the end of another, more than the end of another hour with you folks. I hope you enjoyed as much as we do. We're having a great time. And we look forward to seeing all of you in the winery sometime soon. I hope anyway. And, um, uh, I've been planning a wine called Deep Purple. Remember years ago? I know. We're going to, well. Deep yeah. blue, deep, deep red. Blue, deep purple. Put them together, deep purple. So look forward in the near future to a deep purple. And uh, until then. Smoke on the water. Thank you, everybody, for, for, uh, for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next Monday. I think next Monday is our wine tasting experience. It is. So we're going to have. Uh, I'm actually going to be in Atlanta, pre- so I'm going to be. You're going to join us from Atlanta. That's okay. So we're going to have a a predetermined selection of wines. If you want to join us for the wine tasting side of this, Mm -hmm. um, you can you can go online and learn which wines we're going to talk about next week. And uh, if you want to have those wines with you, you can join in on the tasting. We're going to taste some very uh, particular wines and talk about them. And uh, and I hope you can join us. So thank you everybody for joining us again for another Monday. We've had a a really fun time, Uh, more fun than most. This has been a great great time. So thanks guys, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next Monday. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.